Hi everybody, it's Mr. Spudik. Today we're going to talk about simple machines. Now you know simple machines, you probably learned simple machines in like third grade. Today we're going to go a little more in depth. So we will talk and mention about the different simple machines, but really what we're going to do today is go in depth in understanding why simple machines are important and understand a little bit behind say the math for it. We won't spend as much time with this lecture on each simple machine, but then in other lectures, we will have shorter pieces to talk about a lever, talk about wheel and axle, all those other things. All right, so let's get started. First things first, you should know these simple machines already, okay? So there they are, there are examples of them, lever, wheel and axle, pulley, inclined plane, wedge, and screw. We will go much more in depth than probably what you did before, okay? But just a quick review, there they are. Now, before we get into those simple machines, I want to talk about effort versus resistance and really just kind of a vocabulary for them. Effort will be what you put into the system, okay? Where resistance is going to be the outcome. So think about this picture here, right? The guy rolling these boxes up the ramp, his effort force would be the force he has to pull these boxes up with along the ramp, okay? His effort distance is the length of the ramp that he's going up. So that would be effort, right, what he puts in. Now, his resistance is what the outcome is. So the resistance force would be the actual weight of those box, boxes and if he were to lift it straight up in the air what would be the force he'd have to do that as in without a simple machine so the effort is the or the effort force is what you have to put in if you did not use the simple machine okay now the effort distance will be just the actual distance the boxes go up to okay so in this case if you measured the height of the top of the ramp down straight down to the bottom of the ground, that would be the resistance distance, which is a lot of fun to say, right? So there you go. Going over it again, the effort force was what he put in, pulling it up the ramp. The effort distance was the distance he traveled up the ramp, okay? The resistance force is the actual force that he had to put in to lift up the boxes and the resistance distance is how high up those boxes actually achieve. All right, now we're gonna talk about something called mechanical advantage. And you might think mechanical advantage, if I ask that in a question, that wouldn't be an essay question. It wouldn't be, well, gosh, it's kind of easier to do this. Mechanical advantage is a ratio. It's going to be comparing either forces or distances, depending on what we have, okay? so. Let's say this, what if we had um, an object that had a mechanical advantage of four to one, or four, sometimes I say just four, or four to one. What would that say about the ratio of the forces? Well, if a mechanical advantage was four to one, that, what that means is the simple machine makes us doing that job four times easier. Or another way to say it would be the resistance force is going to be four times greater than the effort force, okay? That outcome force, think about those boxes being lifted up. If I were to lift those boxes straight up, that would be four times harder. There'd be four times more force for me to lift the boxes straight up than if I were to use a ramp, all right? What about the ratio of the distances? Well, the ratio of distances, if we have a, a four to one ratio, that means the distance traveled using the, the effort, okay, your effort distance would be four times greater than your resistance distance. So thinking again about the ramp, if I have a ratio of four to one, a mechanical advantage of four to one using that ramp, that means the length of the ramp going up the ramp is going to be four times longer than picking something straight up. All right, now work, this is a little bit of physics we gotta put in here. Doing work, anytime you do work, 
you give an object energy. Okay, and when we are doing simple machines, we are doing work one way or another, whether we use a simple machine or not, we're doing work. Okay, now formula for it is work is force times distance. However, the force and the distance have to be parallel. They have to be going in the same direction. So think about this box. I'm gonna lift this box up, ready? Amazing, isn't it? Look at that. So in that case, the force, right? The force was going up. I had to fight against gravity to pick that up. The distance was the height. It went up also. So in that case, because they were going the same direction, I did work. Now, if I held something up, but then walked horizontally across a room, I'm fighting against gravity, which is vertical, but I'm walking horizontally. In that case, I wouldn't be doing work. Okay, so the work and the force, or the force and the distance, have to be parallel. All right, I told you that to do work, you have to put energy in the system. What type of energy do you think you are putting into this system here for that job? What would I be doing? What type of energy am I putting in to do that work? Did you guess potential energy? You got it right if you did. All right, uh, with work, you want to always remember that path does not matter, okay? It doesn't matter how you get there. It just matters where you end up, okay? So work is really gonna look at that distance where you ended up, okay? So if you wanna look at the uh, resistance distance, how high it up it achieved, that would be the work, but it's also gonna be times that resistance force. All right, so path does not matter as long as you end up at the same spot. So looking at this ramp here, I could lift something straight up or I could slide it up the ramp. One will be harder to do, one will be easier to do, one will have a shorter distance, one will have a greater distance, but they both have the same amount of work because they both ended up in the same spot, okay? So, a little bit more about mechanical advantage. One is the magic number. If you have something with a mechanical advantage greater than one, that means you're using a simple machine that's going to take less force to do, so your effort force will be less, but it also means you had to travel a longer distance to do it. So you will have a smaller effort force and a greater effort distance. Make sense? Now, if it's less than one, you would actually be having to put in more force than what you're getting out. So if it's less than one, your effort distance will be, or effort force would be greater, but your effort, effort distance would be less. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, think about most of the simple machines you see. The vast majority of your simple machines that you've seen would actually be greater than one. But there are examples and there are times where we actually want to have a mechanical advantage less than one because it would actually slow things down or hey you know um, sometimes they have uh, like machines for weightlifting the plates are really light but they'll make you put in more force than you need to lift them so that you have uh, you know hey big muscles like me all right uh, quick reminder that you could never have a mechanical advantage of zero or less than zero all right now, believe it or not, there are actually two types of mechanical advantage. There's the ideal mechanical advantage and the actual mechanical advantage. The ideal mechanical advantage is what you do by looking at just the distance. It's ideal meaning we're not worrying about any loss due to friction, anything like that. It's just, okay, how far would I travel using the uh, simple machine? How far would I end up with my effort distance? All right, and so the formula is gonna be IMA for ideal mechanical advantage is equal to DE, effort distance, divided by DR, resistance distance. Okay, so I'm a deer. That's an easy way to remember it. IMA will be DE over DR, and you would just look at the distances, the distance to travel using a simple machine, the distance to travel not using a simple machine, and get that ratio. All right, now, actual mechanical advantage is going to look at the forces. And in this case, we actually do keep track of the friction lost. 
okay? So this would be something where we'd have to have some type of measurement besides measurement of distance. We'd have to measure the forces in some way and see how much force it takes us to use the simple machine, how much force it would have taken for us to not use a simple machine, and then compare those values, all right? So AMA, actual mechanical advantage, is FR, resistance force, divided by FE, effort force, okay? And the one thing you always want to know is that your actual mechanical advantage will always have to be less than your ideal mechanical advantage, all right? We'll talk about efficiency later, but just understand that. You will always have an AMA that's less than your IMA. All right, well, that's it for me today. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.